You're very welcome back. Now, January has arrived, which means one thing. Health and fitness books have hit the shelves just in time for your resolutions. And if you're looking for some inspiration to help you reach your goals this year, whether they're to eat healthier, cook more or optimise your brain health, we have you covered. Yes, Gillian Hines from The Body Project joins us now to chat through her top picks. Good morning to you, Gillian. Good morning, Good morning. Gillian. Um, happy and New you Year. Can be bum uh, happy New Year to you and you're very welcome. Um, it's bamboozling to walk into a bookshop, isn't it, mm. at the moment? Because there are just shelves and walls dedicated to health and fitness and resolutions. Absolutely, and walls and walls, and then more, more to the point, going on the internet, so much information out yeah. there, it's all very confusing. Yes, so you have kind of narrowed it down to your top four books. Yeah. Um, th books that you really feel like you can kind of stand over in terms of their content. D definitely, and I think for us all to learn more about our bodies in general and our health, not just our health and fitness, but actually, you know, risk for disease, longevity, lots of different things. Okay. okay, and we're kicking off with Glow 15. So this is this is a 15 day plan to help kickstart your new regime. Is that what exactly? It is? And what what I like about this book because all too often these kind of quick plans they're unsustainable. But this yeah. is a very sustainable plan. I really like the kind of things that she's supporting. Um, so obviously, you know, at the outset, it's staying away from processed foods, staying away from sugary foods. That's like first and foremost. We all know that. But she also incorporates things like intermittent fasting, and your viewers will be some you know some of your viewers will be familiar with that. Others will never have heard of it. And it's basically planned periods of not eating. And that sounds a little bit intimidating, but it's actually much easier than you think. And it, unbelievably healthy for us in terms of our um, weight loss, but also for risk of disease. Um, she also um, incorporates um, HIIT training um, and weights training. She's lots of exercises there in the book What's and things we training? can do. So HIIT training is high intensity high interval intensity. training. Okay. And as well, that can sound a bit intimidating, but my version of HIIT training might be different to yours and different to Simon's. Yeah. So it's kind of what's high intensity for you, but is the best way to lose weight and best way to, to grow muscle at the same time. Highly effective. I think it's a great plan and a great you know antidote to all the excessive Christmas. Okay, because our own resident nutritionist uh, Heather Leeson talks about that intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. yeah. and she would often say, "Finish dinner at seven o'clock yeah. and don't eat until seven o'clock the next morning for your breakfast." Mm -hmm. So, do you feel it should be extended? Well, Naomi Whittle supports a sixteen-hour non-eating oh, window. That's a long window. But now. you know what? It's, it's funny. <laughs> it's not because if you stop eating at eight o'clock at night, you go to bed maybe around eleven. You get up at eight. You only have to get to twelve o'clock that day to do a sixteen-hour fast. Mm. And I, I did some experimenting with myself. It, it, last summer I had clients doing it and the results were astounding. I found it absolutely amazing and really easy to stick to. It's very it's very black and white. It's very easy to, to just not eat actually when you mm. put your mind to it. And then when you're in your eight hour eating window, you tend to eat better. So it's, it's an amazing tool. Um, and I would highly recommend people give it a go. Okay, so the second one, uh, that Naomi Whittle, you said was written the first, the second one, David Perlmutter, yeah. Brain Maker. And this yeah. talks about the ill effects of gluten. And as a father of a celiac child, now this mm. has rung a bell for me. It piques well, your interest. It, yeah. I, his original book, in fact, was, was Grain Brain, and that was very much an exhaustive study at mm. looking at the relationship of gluten and our health and, and neurological problems. This book, though it does touch on gluten, it, this is actually about your, your gut microbiome, and that's basically the bacteria that lives in our intestines. Yeah. So people would f find that a bit horrifying, but if we didn't have this bacteria, we wouldn't be alive. Mm. Yeah. So we really need it. But the, problem, the good bacteria. The, well, we have all sorts of bacteria but the problem is in the modern world we're, we're through our diets through excessive use of antibiotics we're, we're exacerbating what I'm going to call the bad bacteria to put it very simply we need that bad bacteria we just don't need as much of it so we've kind of created a ratio imbalance more bad bacteria less of the good bacteria and that has really serious implications and as, when you're reading this book there's incredible studies and this is like a real new I suppose field of study um, and there's just incredible evidence to suggest that the, that, that bad imbalance is, is has a huge relationship with neurological problems um, from um, dementia to depression um, and also autoimmune disease and um, so lots of things like rheumatoid arthritis mm. uh, ulcerative colitis and you know you have to read it I suppose yourself to kind of get to, to, to I suppose understand that because it kind of sounds like nonsense but actually you know it's quite clear from the studies that there is a but huge the, connection as you say, the fact that there's a connection yeah. between these yeah now, it's new to us this, isn't I, it? I think, yeah, and I think it's, it's it's something that's been coming out in the last few years. I think it's going to be a huge conversation yeah. in the coming years, and I think we'll look back in time and go, "How did we not know this?" Yeah. You know, how, in a hundred years' time, it'll be so yeah. it'll be so, it's so the the thing to kind of make sure that the gut microbiome is healthy. But it has implications for our weight because it's something I didn't know. The bad bacteria, again, you know, I'm very much oversimplifying it here, extracts more calories from food than yeah. the good bacteria. So you imagine twin sisters on the same diet, one might be lean and the other one might be overweight, simply because the, the bacteria is out of whack. Yeah. 
Um, but, it, what, you know, encouragingly, he does provide information how to correct that. So, and it's quite, quite, quite simple stuff. It's probiotics and prebiotics. Yeah. Um, the good news is coffee, tea and wine and chocolate are on the menu, so he doesn't take those off. Oh, I like it's not him. all misery. Fantastic. Um, but it, it, there but are sugar-rich diets. I think I think at the crux of all our problems is sugar, sugar and, and, and processed yeah. foods. We, we, you know, we all know that. And definitely sugar and high fructose corn syrup and the kind of the guises that it comes in, even in Europe, are things to be eliminated and things we need to watch out for. OK, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, book number three is The Body. This is Bill Bryson. So we yeah. were having a chat yeah. about Bill Bryson during the break. Lots of viewers yeah. will be familiar with his mm -hmm. travel books. Exactly. But and this he, is him in kind yeah. of a different guise, I to suppose. A totally, a, a total departure from him. But I suppose, in a way, it's an exploration of the human body. So like, it's kind of a, almost a travelogue of, of human life from birth to death and from literally our skin right to our insides. And, you know, if biology had been this interesting at school, I'm sure I'd have paid a lot more attention. And, and you know, it's just a really interesting book. It's full of funny anecdotes, also information about how, you know, me medical science evolved through the years, how we d made uh, scientific discoveries. And I think, I think what's nice about this book is you learn so much about your body. And, we, you know, most of us go through our lives, we know very little about it, and we don't really respect our body mm. necessarily as a result. But I think actually knowing more about your body is a really good thing, because you kind of think, my God, this is the most incredible machine. Uh, and and imagine you know, it's a very accessible yeah. read as well because of his writing it's stuff. Yeah, it's really, interesting. it's really interesting. And look, if, you know, learning more in the new year is one of your news resolutions. Exactly. You know, stick this on your reading list. It's, it's a really, really great book. So the last one is something that we've done on the show uh, here before by Fumiko Takatsu, which is face yoga methods. Yeah. So, so That's you know, becoming huge. Isn't it, it is. It I mean, is, we had a bit of fun with it, but yeah. actually, it is becoming a big trend, isn't it? I, I think so. Well, actually, sadly for me, it was. A, I, I came across this book. It was a sponsored ad on Instagram. So obviously, they're watching me. They know I'm in my forties yeah, and paranoid targeted. about my skin. I'm like, this is a bit depressing. <laughs> yeah. They found me. But um, you know, it's uh, it's it, you know, we, we talk about toning our bodies, our arms, our bums, and all this stuff. Mm. But actually, our faces get left behind, and you know, we're all paranoid about it, unfortunately. And you know, all these medical interventions we're doing, which you know, they're expensive. They don't mm. last and all too often they don't even look great. Yeah. You know, so the natural route is always the best route. You know, we have something like 70 muscles in our faces and our necks and we can target them too. You need too. to exercise them. Yeah, you know, but actually I have to laugh. Like some of the exercises, are, you know, I was trying to do some of them and honestly, you, you have to be locked oh, away in a room do, on yeah, your own. Yeah, we've done a few. Yeah, they no, are the do. most... Uh, uh, oh, it's, not even, it's yeah. worse than that, but you actually look completely insane. You do, so, yeah. like, I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> trying to drive the car. Doing these do it in the places. privacy of your own home. Totally. Um, but, you know, uh, it, it's, it's definitely worth a try. And actually, you can feel it. Like, the car is a good place like, to do it, actually, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but then I have seen fellow drivers kind of looking, <laughs> looking yeah. at me, going, thinking <laughs> at they the need lights. to call an ambulance. Well, listen, we're right out of time. Thank you for coming in. Oh, thank you for having me. Recommendations are brilliant. A great selection there. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Gillian.